Every time I look at you, I fall just a little more, and I can't help myself. And I'd risk it all just to be by your side. Me, nobody in my way, nobody, nobody. Ain't no time to stop, cause we already there. If you're jealous, take a pick, don't just stop and stare. On the way to success, we ain't taking rest. We go into the top and we can't be stopped. You can't turn me around, can't bring me down. You know who I am, just look at my crown. This was the song I wrote, and it's called Sure as the Earth Rises. Songwriting is, can be anything. I mean, a, a song can be anything. I mean, literally anything. Um, number one, never that self. Keep I didn't really know a lot about songwriting. I had never really written a song. Well, it's most definitely something I've never done before or I've never thought that I would be doing this before. I've written my own songs before, but it's still nice to learn an official process, to have a nice method to go off. I mean, nobody in my way, nobody, nobody. It's just one of those things that until you've done it, you don't know what it's like. Until you've made yourself do that, um, you don't quite know what it takes to make sure a song has a beginning, a middle, and an end. I can't do this anymore. That's the first thing. You can't just start writing if you have no motive. Um, you have to know where you're going to start, what are you going to start with. I mean, remember, it's mm -hmm. a soul ballad. That's going to be the challenge, I think, okay? Especially that. I thought that sounds like a lot, well, but it, it, it sounded like a lot of fun, too. Um, I knew we didn't have much time and uh, we had originally talked about four songs. Uh, cutting it down to three made it a little more manageable. Because there were three genres, R&B slash soul ballad. What you baby, what you baby. Folklore pop slash country. hip-hop rap. We wanted to have some stylistic genres and uh, even within genres there's so many options that kids can have and that could be overwhelming. Yes it really wasn't easy. I'm not a rapper but none of us were so we were trying to figure out how we're going to get these lyrics. What are we, what are we going to even say and how will we say it? Will it go with the beat and Wait, what beat are we using? Like, it was just all together confusing. I want Mr. Kip to figure it out. I don't know if it's easy to play in F sharp, but you may want to be It was a lot of F. starting and stopping. It was really just uh, getting a lot of our means. opinions heard. I throw out a line, and someone else comes with a line and make it rhyme together. That was slow. We all had different creases at the beginning, and then he starts speeding up. I like that. They had this little trick in there where there was an extra four beats, basically an extra measure between the chorus and one of the verses. And one of the background vocalists was, was recording the vocals and she started her part four beats early and it threw off the whole rest of the song. I missed that. And somebody actually said, no, there's an extra four beats there that we decided was going to be there. So by the time you added that, it all worked out. But it was, for a minute there, it was a train wreck and nobody could figure out what had gone wrong. Okay. Well, let's find it and we'll add it. Which one is it? It was just like the first one, like after Popable. It was kind of some dead silence and we we're kind of just like, okay, why are we here? Why are we doing this? You ready? Yeah. Here we go. You can't stop You could have left out that four beats and it would have worked and nobody would have noticed, but they made the decision. And songwriting is a series of decisions like filmmaking or anything else. And they had made that decision so they had to go back and make sure they stuck with it. We decided to talk about success and we, t we 
wanted to like give rules on how to be successful. You don't hear that a lot, especially in the genre of hip hop. So we decided to, hey, let's stick to hip hop, but be different with it. There's another group that we kind of called folk pop or country. Country music was nothing that I listened to that was far off my range. Um, I kind of like songs that are out there that don't typically follow the I love you pattern. Since we did have country, so we had to find a country sound to start off with. It wound up more in that kind of folksy, almost an alternative kind of uh, acoustic vein. And then once we got the beat in, it's like the lyrics flew kind of quickly. not the typical, I love you, you don't love me, uh, get back together, break up. <laughs> it follows, it has some of that in it, but we take that and we run with it in an entirely different direction that's unexpected. Oh, I think it's great. I think it's great. I enjoy songwriting. I've written a lot of songs. I've never written a song and then recorded it within even two days. There's nobody waiting or pushing me to get my songs on record. They didn't have that luxury, so they had to make decisions stick to them. <laughs> But you don't need me to. And then like... Oh, then the bridge. What do you think we should have there, guitar? Working in a group? Yeah, we'd be like... It's, meow, it's meow. difficult at times because everybody has such different opinions and styles. And then you're all put into one genre, which we got R&B. And then it's... um. The challenge about the song was trying to figure out the right lyrics in the verses. Like we tried to figure out some words that could probably fit in the chorus or try to figure out some words that would probably fit in the bridges. But we had to like count for each beat and figure out how it would fit in each type of measure. Okay, what's the beginning note? Like name the key. My voice is not in the style of R&B, but um, it's actually been really fun because first we started off and we were going to make like a, a fast-ish R&B song with like trumpets and that sort of thing and it didn't really work like it wasn't sounding R&B-ish enough and so um, Dr. Horrell gave us the suggestion. Our song was all over the place at first but when he stepped in and helped us out he actually showed us the ways and how we can make sure the song wouldn't yeah. just fall into the you wrong category. No instead of last. <laughs> no you're not no I don't think so I think you I think you guys will be ready. All right. It actually ended up sounding um, a lot more like an R&B song. And on that fateful day when you walked away, you still burned in my mind. Sometimes you have to hear the whole thing before you're really sure if it's good or if it's bad or if it's somewhere in between that you can you can take to a better place. I want you, baby, and I, I want you. Well, personally, I sound just a little embarrassed to say this, but I didn't know what the Royal Studios were. Just when I found out like how much of a big deal this was, I was like, wow, we really have this big opportunity to work in a professional setting in the real world while fearing no judgment. Whereas not as many, pe not as many people, especially high schoolers have the opportunity. So I was just like, Wow. It's already inside me, nobody in my way, nobody, nobody. I'm very excited to go to Royal Studios to actually be in a professional music studio and record something like the professionals do it. Yeah, I think it's good for them to get a taste of the real world and what it, you know, uh, means to do something professional. Um, you know, people see it on YouTube videos, but I, I think it's uh, inspirational. Uh, for the students to get a hands-on, you know, world-class experience. It wasn't hard, but it was very fun. Germantown has always had a high level of uh, talent, talented performers. Uh, the two young ladies that just sang, uh, they're in perfect tune. The songs are written great. You know, th the three songs were very different, and they're all unique in their own way. Um, and I think they're well-written songs. Because you're not going to take it from there, right? So you're just right. going to have it for a moving point. I mean, it's, it's great to be back uh, where it all started for me. It's kind of like research for me. It's, it's like just to see what these wonderful group of talented uh, uh, students that are like, you know, filmmakers as well, like what their ideas are and what they're coming up with and um, how really 
passionate they are with really what they want to do. A music video is, is just a short film, but you have to know what you're doing. You have to fit a certain style. So we started out by watching uh, examples of, of the music videos that uh, Wahid has done. And after seeing some of the techniques that he used, after hearing him talk about the process that he goes through in a professional world, um, we tried to replicate that in, in the scale of a week. Our plan is for you to be standing. This is my first time directing. And Everyone in our group usually has some type of aspect in front of the camera, but this has been a different experience for all of us. We've all worn different hats where I'm directing, but I'm also helping write the song. Kendall is producing, but she's also acting in the song. And so that's been really different, but really fun. But what was really beautiful about this part of the workshop is because it was a collaborative effort and all, all the groups were encouraged to talk to each other and Good teach each other. Time. And so we, we listened to everybody's ideas. We respected everybody's ideas. If, if the majority didn't like it, then we didn't do it. If the majority did like it, then we tried to fit it as best as we could. The most rewarding part of it was seeing the interaction between them and how they like, really talk to each other it can um, be like as we do as adults on set. It's been a real learning process for all of us. We were lucky enough to, to be given this equipment that is used in the professional world, uh, like the, the Dana dolly, which is which allows for the forward and backwards motion or the side to side motion. What I like about these clinician things that they're doing right now with, with this newer technologies, right? The, the HD cameras, smaller cameras and all that stuff, being able to bring dollies and, and creative lighting is that you can see that their wheels are turning and saying, oh, this is a different way of doing it. And I think they're going to now, this group that I'm working with right now, is going to become the ones that are setting the legacy for the next five to six years. I think it's unique because not only are the clinicians, you know, alumni of our program, but that they took the time to work with us and they taught us from scratch. They took it from us having a blank piece of paper and no creative ideas to an eventual finished product that we're all going to be really proud of because of all the hard work and dedication that we put into our projects because we really care. They, they listened to the guidelines and they figured out what the parameters were and they went right to it and they didn't say, well, I don't like that style. They didn't say, I don't want to do that. I, I would rather do the hip hop song or I'd rather do the soul song or can we switch groups? Uh, there, none of that happened. I think stuff like this really helps them um, get ready for college, get ready for the professional world, and be able to um, have knowledge of relevant techniques and relevant technology that they may not otherwise be able to get from just a, a single class. I think it's extremely vital if we want to continue that legacy of getting kids from this program into the professional world. These students uh, are used to an expectation that they finish products and that they work together and that their products are high quality and that they're thoughtful and uh, I think they're also used to knowing that people are going to see them. They're going to see what they do. I think it has everything to do with uh, this environment and this background and this kind of expectation for high quality work.